One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Hey, guys. So this is James Hake and I am the uh, from the well this is the Hake report and I am James Hake. It is 2020 Monday January 6th and I'm live in hour 4 of Jesse Lee Peterson's stream. Thank you Jesse. Hope you get your voice back. Did you guys notice? Anyways. Um I'm healthy. I don't know about the rest of you guys. I actually I did get sick a little bit and I was blowing my nose earlier this morning. So stay healthy, guys. The sickness is increasing amongst... I mean, I, I do believe that Jesse has a, Lee Peterson has a point about the um, illegal aliens disease, but I reported at the top of one of these hours, I think it was hour two, Hake News hour two of Jesse Lee Peterson's show today, about the SARS. Not exactly SARS, but SARS happened 17 years ago. I don't know if some of you may not remember it, but SARS was ch- in took place in China, killed almost 800 people, and um, now there's another pneumonia outbreak. Nobody that I know of has died yet, but 44 people were diagnosed with n- pneumonia in this town in ch- China. 11 people were in critical condition. Crazy, and it was. 44 was, was as of this past Friday, and that was up from 27 three days prior. So who knows? I mean, you could check in on the news and see what's going on. Maybe I'll report more on that in Hake News tomorrow. So be careful, guys, everybody. It's not just the illegals. It's also the Chinese and um, many Americans, too. More and more people living unhealthy lives. Can I get an amen? I am wearing a not all, not all, not all t-shirt from Jesse Lee Peterson's Teespring store. It is a little high. I didn't notice. And so I'm going to report back. I got this months ago, maybe a year ago or more. It says not all, not all, not all. And And then on the back it says, but most. And then below it says, below it says Jesse Lee Peterson. It's cool. It's kind of like Jesse Lee Peterson's, one of his signature sayings. But um, you can get that from teespring.com slash stores slash Jesse Lee Peterson. If they get the order wrong like this, just t- uh, take a picture and email them. There's a way to contact them and upload a photograph of the, of the error that they made. And they'll gladly send you a replacement. Although they sometimes get stuff wrong occasionally and sometimes take too long, they do try to do what's right as far as customer service in the end. So, that's Teespring. I'm uh, glad to be using them. So, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about these... Well, you know, the, the wrong people are getting involved with this so-called fight against anti-Semitism. These attacks on the Jews over in New York City. The ADL? Who do, what do you trust the ADL for? Nothing. I mean, you can't, tr- I guess sometimes they give out factual information, kind of like the liberal media, but they're not for what's right. They smear, they, they're supposed to be against defamation. They defame people all the time because they push the lie of anti-Semitism, just like the people, just like the media pushes the lie of racism and all that mess. And they don't tell the whole story about the Me Too movement. They talk about what the men supposedly did wrong, but not what about, about what the women do wrong and did wrong. And then Planned pa- I want to get to Planned Parenthood put it, running this PR campaign. I got this excellent tip from, uh, from Bubs Love, one of my uh, interns, very talented guy. Shout out Bubs Love and D-Live from the, everybody in the D-Live crew. Um about Planned Parenthood opening up clinics in 
Los Angeles County High Schools. And then I hope to present the, the total story, the one that I botched when I passed it over to Jesse Lee Peterson for um, reading, because Jesse Lee Peterson gave this tip on air about this family that you, he, it's called in the media an American family. The boy is a citizen. I surmise that he's an anchor baby. Well, he's dead now. He got killed. Um, possibly by cartels down in Mexico. This family is on vacation and they were coming back just south of Texas. They get murdered in their cars. Well, one got murdered, three got injured by this crazy shooting. I'll report on that. But first, let me get to a few calls. And then, um, and then we'll get to this stuff. All right, guys? So, uh, oh, interesting. You know, let me get to John out of Washington State. John, how are you? This is Hake. I'm well. How about you? Doing fine. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, it's nice to hear from you, too. So, you guys live in California, which has a lot of wildfires. Yep. And they're having a wildfire in uh, Australia. Yeah. But they... But the only thing is, is that the guy that invented the super tanker, they basically bankrupted him and then he ended up dying. But the super tanker could fly over and put out the forest fires. I think they sent it down to Brazil or somewhere. Wow. But To fight the Amazon fire? Yeah. Wow. But, but they... Uh, They don't really talk about the super tanker and, like, the Space Force and stuff. They spend all that money on that, but they don't actually, like, here on the ground, they're not doing anything about forest fires and stuff. They're just burning up and polluting the air and all that. It's just a bunch of nonsense. So is there only one super tanker in the world or something like that, that they don't have one for Australia and one for Brazil? Um, I don't know. I know it's an American company and they have like, they have one. I don't know how many they, they're supposed to have or whatever, but yeah, I read about, yeah, I read about these Australian f- fires in Hake News in hour three of today, just at the, t- the top yeah. of hour three. And you know, I had been hearing about it for weeks. I just kind of ignored it because you know, Americans kind of self-centered. We only talk about American stuff. Uh, you, know, if it's a, if it goes on and on and on, which it has, then I start to talk about it. And of course, like we were hearing about climate change all this time, and now we hear that there's a whole lot of arson, and the arsons go up when the kids are out of school or students are out of school. Maybe they're not necessarily minors. Some of them may be college students, but it's crazy. I was gonna, I was gonna say like they, the Chinese actually uh, attacked Oregon um, back in World War II with firebombs. Wow! For our forests, but you know it was a rainy time, so <laughs> didn't really catch on. That's funny. You would think the Asians would yep. be smarter than that. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's wild. That's a shame. It is. I'm just saying if if anybody can get to uh President Donald J. Trump, he should definitely think about putting some money into the forest fires. Yeah, into being able to stamp these out, huh? You know, there's yeah, a lot that he little... could there's a lot that he could be doing and it is easy to sit back and criticize, and a lot of the criticisms may well be founded. I'm going to read a story about 400,000 anchor babies being born in the United States in 2019, I think, from Breitbart. Yeah. And he, before, the, before he was elected, he was talking about this anchor baby thing, this birthright citizenship, is an abuse of the 14th Amendment. And it's... It, he suggested that it could be, I think he suggested, that it could be done away with 
with just an executive order. I don't know what type of court battle would result from that. But, yeah, uh, he's criticized California, you know, the liberals here in California, for very poor yep. management of the forests here. And it's caused a yeah. lot of problems. Including mudslides that follow these forest fires sometimes. Mudslides have taken yeah. out major rich people's homes even. Well, yeah, I mean, you guys are one of the richest country, or states in the United States, and all the money goes to cleaning up the poop and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's like the richest yeah. and the most homeless. It's ridiculous. Exactly. Stupid liberals. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you, John. Thanks for bringing this up. Yep. God bless you and everybody there. All right. You as well. Take care. Have a good one. All right. Bye. Let me quickly get to Louie out of Idaho. And then Earl, and then we'll get into this stuff. Louie, how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing, man? Doing fine. Good to hear from you. Yeah. What's up? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm bothered by the uh, female Marines. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, are they promoting them lately? I know that they were talking about possibly reinstituting the, the draft, or people were being scared of that because that. They're, cause they're talking about World War Three is coming up because Trump yep. droned Soleimani, Soleimani that yep. Iranian general. People think that World War Three is coming, so these women on <laughs> Twitter... I was saying in Hake News, these women on Twitter are talking about, I just want to be a, I just want to be a housewife all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would well, be better. That, but my son is a Marine. My son is a Marine. He's 20 years old. Yeah. He's a Marine. You know? And you know, though, they're talking about, um, they're talking about integrating the men and the women together. I thought I heard it on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. I think I did. They're yeah. integrating men and women down to the platoon level during boot camp. And this is the Marines that we're talking about. And the Marines are supposed you know, to be tough. You know, men have to do 20, women have to do 10, for example. I mean, Talk about pull-ups? the numbers are right. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it sounds probably yeah. pull-ups. Men have to do 10, 20 pull-ups, women have to do 10. Yeah. That's crazy. That's, yeah. that's so... Yeah. That's liberals for you. They don't, they're not for actually protecting the country. They're for protecting women's egos. You know, they talk, you yeah. ta they talk about men's s fragile e egos. It's women's fragile egos. And yeah, men are getting weak too, but nobody's pointing out, at least except for Jesse Lee Peterson, is pointing out that these <laughs> women have these fragile egos. There's a book by Dick Masters and Men Are Better Than Women. Yeah. It's a joke. Yep. It's just a joke, but it's good. It's a good book. It's funny. <laughs> All right. Appreciate the tip. He's a, he seems like a nice do guy. It. Do it. <laughs> take care, man. All right. Take care, Louis. Good to hear from you, man. Bye-bye. All right. So let me get to Earl, and then, uh, and then we'll go forward. Earl, out of, out of Michigan, my second favorite caller still. Earl, how are you? Hola, James. How you doing? Doing fine. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm calling in response. I heard you Sunday. Yeah. I'm trying to answer my Bible go-to guy's question. Uh, uh, you want to try that again? But you made a feeble attempt. It yeah. Pathetic. Yeah, it was pathetic because it was true. <laughs> and it was no, so it's easy to true. answer. Yeah, it's true. You had no answer. Yeah, I did. I said Jesus didn't have to forgive Mary because Jesus was perf is perfect and he doesn't he never has had resentment, but he did break away from Mary. He broke away from her at 13. When did you break away from your mother? That had nothing to do with that had nothing to do with the Anything, uh, uh, James. It has everything to do with Jesse Lee Peterson's fact, message. So, yes, huh? The fact that... <laughs> hey, hey, fact Earl. That, uh, 
Earl, when you call, well, how come you don't? Sentence, how come you don't try to challenge Jesse hey, Lee Peterson hey, with why these? Why don't you let me finish a sentence? To, to, I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish. Why do you keep interrupting me? I'll let you just finish, just Baby Farrakhan. Like I just, I was quiet and let you answer ask the question. Just yeah, but but let me ask you a quick though. question. No, don't ask me yes. until I answer yes. one question. Yes, I'm the host. You have to obey me. I don't me. care what you are. Yeah, you're rude. I that don't care no if I'm rude. I'm the host. I get to be rude. I don't give a damn what you are. You can't but, say uh, damn. That's that's a cuss word. Okay, so how come you don't how come you don't challenge Jesse Lee Peterson with these tough biblical questions? I do challenge you. Where you been? I didn't I hear you. Him. You called in this morning. How come you didn't ask him? I had a, I had a million other things I could talk to Jesse about. Uh, how come you didn't ask him about Jesus? This is central to Jesse Lee Peterson's message about forgiving your mother. I don't. I I just repeat that message because it seems to make sense to me. But that's well, Jesse Lee Peterson's me, main well, message. I but you're too you're cowardly to ask Jesse Lee Peterson it. Uh, you skipping all around, evading. No. You said you're no. You're evading. Question. You said uh, your father. You said that uh, Jesus was perfect. I right. He was perfect. But the thing about it is, he still had the the, uh, 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 what do you call it? All the ailments and uh, sources and sensations of humankind. So he had to prove it. That was the object. That was the purpose. He, didn't, he still was subject to all the whims and all the temptations and all the shortcomings of a human. You think he had so anger? Huh? You think Jesus had anger towards his mother and needed to f go forgive her? I wouldn't say he had anger toward her, but I know he he demonstrated anger, and he and he never said anger was a sin, which Jesse said. Yeah, he did. The thing about it is. Yeah, uh, he did. He said, "If and, you're and the thing, hey hey the problem that you said." Hold on, Earl. 12, you just lied. I have to cut in old. and interrupt you now. Well, you said he was twelve. Do right says. Calm down, so, Hake. Wow, you're red. Uh, <laughs> hey, the, Earl, let me interrupt you. You you just lied about Jesus. He did say, if you're angry with your brother, you're um, in danger of the fires of hell, or something like that. Well, you bring up you you find that 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 check. That no, he, no, I don't have to find it. I just was, I just cited the, it. He kicked the folks out of out of the temple for for usury and. And conducted business in there. Yeah, that he was anger that was just so that was just business. He didn't say he, it. It never said that he was and angry the, at that point. Other thing, it didn't say he was angry. The only the, time, hey, hey, Earl. The only time, the Bible, Earl, is, is Earl. Let me interrupt anger. you again. Now you're because you're keep on lying about Jesus, about what the Bible says. The only time that it no. says that, it doesn't say that Jesus was angry when he kicked the tables over. It doesn't say that. It does not say that. So you're assuming A-S-S-U-M-E. And then the other thing is the only time that it says that he's angry was when he looked around at the people uh, grieved by their hardness of heart. And that was when it said he looked at, about at them angrily. But he had There's an angry face. That doesn't mean he was sin. angry inside. There's it didn't mean he was... He didn't sin. mean it... It wasn't like baby Farrakhan's anger. Does the Bible anger. say anger is a sin? Huh? Does the Bible say anger... You don't to care about the Bible? Yes. Huh? Yeah. You don't care about the Bible anyway. You're a Democrat. You know, you just Because Jesus, Jesus said, I mean, uh, God said he was, his anger was kindled with, with, against Moses. Yeah, but that's God's and anger. God has spoken of being angry many times in the Bible. That's God's so, anger. God has anger the right. Sin, <laughs> then, you God, then you say in God's sin. So you think, right? you're, you think you're God when you're angry? You don't have to. That's not a... Look out of that question. God's God's uh -uh. sin. Does he do the same thing? He condemns the devil for doing. No, that's dumb. Well, God has the right. Nobody else he, has the right. If he, if he can get angry, then it's not a sin, is it? Yes, it is, because so it is because you're trying to up, you're trying to sit in judgment just out. like God does. It's God's ju hey, it's what? God's place to avenge and stuff like that. Anyways, so Earl, said, this is this is a tired argument, and you're too scared to face Jesse with this. No, I face him all the time. No, 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 you're I, afraid. I was facing uh -uh. him uh, before I started on you. So don't make up that lie. Uh, the 
thing about it, you don't have an answer to it. I answered you. That's the problem. And then what about the Earl, other disciples? Earl, you're what a Democrat. The Earl. Did they have to go? Did they have to go to their mama? Earl, and, are you a Democrat? Mama and daddy. Oh, and, and when did they start? Earl. When did they start to start? Huh? Did, did the disciples have to go to their mama? I don't know. Maybe. If anyone you no. have anger towards, you Finally, better forgive. Find me a, a text in the, in, the, in the Bible where anybody in the Bible says they had to run to their mama and forgive them and their daddy for the way they were raised. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. That's a, it's an interesting question. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you the Bible does say, and Jesus said it himself, if you have anger towards anyone then God won't forgive you. Because if you don't forgive them, God won't forgive you. And he said that. Twice. So, now. So, Earl. Um, I'm done. Thank you. You're a Democrat. All right, how do you answer me, By the way, you're a Democrat. It's not Christian. So, you're a Republican. You're, you're, you're repugnant. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. Adios, amigo. All right. Adios, amigo. At least he didn't say enemigo. That means enemy, I think. <laughs> Let me get to... Oh, my other guy hung up. Um, you know what? Let me quickly, before I get to the rest of you... You know what? Let me get to Mike out of New Hampshire. He's talking about something I want to hit. First time caller, Mike. What's up? How you doing, sir? Doing fine. Good. I just wanted to give you a call about just like, your opinion on this whole mess that maybe we're entering, because I don't think anybody knows really what's going on in people that say they do. I honestly think that they don't. But yeah. I want to say your opinion of um, Trump launching the airstrike and killing uh, the Iran second general, second in charge general. You know, if that was a good idea or a bad idea. I don't know if it was a good idea, idea or a bad idea. I generally trust Trump, and I like how he is um, unpredictable, and he takes strong action at times. So I personally was thrilled that he did it, because it was like sh a shocking, like, uh, m statement and action. And that really kind of put the smack down on them. It is, I don't know what's going to happen, I don't know if it was right or wrong. But I was personally kind of excited about it. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if it was right or wrong, and I don't know what's going to happen. I do generally, I'm happy that Trump is president during this time, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to anybody else. But other than that, I, I don't know. Because I think, I think it was a mistake because the Iraq war is still going on. We're still over there. We're still in all those countries over there. And he promised, one of his main promises was to get us out of these uh, endless wars. Yeah. And that with this airstrike killing that general, it seems to me like he's going to get us even to a bigger one. Iran is twice the size of Iraq. Their people are more religious. Their people are more united. So if, if he thinks that, you know, we're going to take them on, I think it's a terrible idea because I think we have problems in America. Yeah. Who knows how much money per year that this Iraq war and Syrian war and every other country we're in right. um, is costing us per, per, per second, per minute, per day, per hour. And we can use that money at home to fix the drug problems, fix uh, opioid epidemic, fix the homelessness. But all that money is being used over there. And that guy, I did do some reading on that guy that got killed. And in 2002, he was helping, actually, America um, fight al-Qaeda. Uh -huh. And then President Bush called Iran evil, <laughs> and he got, he got kind of mad at him. But yeah. I don't think he's like the enemy that people are propping him out to be. And did you also hear... Because they Trump did that because of the contractor that got killed, and then Iraq stormed the embassy, and then Trump did the airstrike. Is that what the? I think that's what I'm gathering that the main, like the the media or the mainstream media or people are saying that how it led up to this. Is, is that how you saw it too? 
Yeah, from what I understand is there's been a whole lot of tit-for-tat type of thing where yep. Iran is supposedly behind one thing or another and um, Iran was supposedly behind this attack on the embassy and supposedly one of the guys who was um, part of this, you know, riot attack type thing on the embassy was pretty weak. Um, he was killed along with the uh, that General Sole Soleimani in one of the two cars that were leaving the Baghdad airport. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know much about the Soleimani guy. I heard that he was behind the um, a lot of the IED, improvised explosive device, um, bombings mm -hmm. of Americans that have killed and maimed the, a lot of guys and maybe some gals. Um, so... Whatever happened, if, if, uh, whether it was Bush's fault for making him into an enemy, I don't know. But, um, one thing that my brother told me a long time ago, before I was really into politics, but he was, is that politicians don't win wars, but they fight these wars. And they, since we, we've had politicians fighting wars, we haven't won a war. And I think that's really true. Because that's yep. happened and from rich off of the wars. Vietnam and Korea and all of these wars, even through basically to today. We've had yep. politicians fighting the wars as opposed to people who want to win. And I think Trump yeah. wants to win. And, you know, regarding this opioid stuff, it is a major problem in the homelessness. We need a cultural change more so than pouring money into it. There's a whole lot of mm -hmm. money grubbing uh, programs, non-government organizations, non-profits, and government uh, stuff that just blow money like crazy. Look at California yep. and look at the education system and stuff. It's mm -hmm. a mess. So, yes, we do need to deal with the problems at home. I don't, I think that our money is well spent to build up our national defenses, but we mm -hmm. also really have to, we need a, we need a a culture like men need to become men again, as Jesse Lee Peterson exactly. says. Exactly. Yeah. Like there's a bigger problem. Like you got to fix a lot of things at home. But like you were saying, with that to change the society, it's not you can't just throw money at things and expect it to go away. Yeah. But that makes that makes that's a great point too. But I just think getting into a giant problem over there, it's going to make the homegrown problems get put on the back burner for that much more longer. So it's kind of like not. you're, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I hope it's not, I hope that doesn't happen. But um, that just mm -hmm. means that people like you and I need to, um, need to get ourselves right and, and yep. be a, an example around here so that we can um, rebuild the people here. Mm -hmm. Whatever and is happening one, with the yeah. leaders. And then one more point before you go. Um, yeah. Did you also hear about the, death of three Americans in Africa? No. So, three Americans died at the hands of the Sunni Islam Islamics, and that happened, I think, Sunday in Kenya. Oh, the really? Sunnis attacked Kenya military base, three Americans killed. So my question here is, three American soldiers died there? I it, I'm I'm not seeing anything in the media about them getting a giant airstrike for actual three American soldiers. So that could have happened to any American soldier like myself if I was a soldier. Never yeah. mind just one contractor. I would think an American soldier uh, is worth more than a contractor, in my opinion. Yeah. So I don't like any lives being lost. But three American soldiers died there. Yep. And we're not hearing anything about it in the media. But one contractor dies over there in Iraq, and then they launch a couple airstrikes, and then they get mad, and then they storm the embassy. So, like, in my overall thing over there, it kind of seems like the U.S. is kind of egging them on to get into a war and with Iran. Yeah, you know, so I am— People surrounding Trump need to have— they're not loyal to Trump. They're not loyal to America. They're loyal to somebody else. Yeah. And they're loyal, and they're loyal to that somebody else that needs to have an, a war with Iran, and it needs to have America do it 
so they don't have to do it because Iran is a threat to them, and Kenya is not. That's right. why. That's what I believe. That's why we are not hearing anything about this. Wow. So three American soldiers that died. You never mind one contractor. I I personally can't define a contractor. I'll be <laughs> honest. I don't know yeah. what they. I don't know what they do. I'm Could sure be they con- contract wars, but <laughs> you know. I appreciate it, Mike. Thank you for the tip, man. Yep, you're welcome. All right, take care. Thanks for, thanks for my having my call. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. All right. So yeah, the Guardian reports Al Shabaab extremists overran a key military base in Kenya. I don't know what key means. Killing three American DOD personnel, destroying several U.S. aircraft and vehicles before they were repelled. Wow, what a mess. Manda Airfield, early Sunday, with the Al-Qaeda-linked groups, first attack against U.S. forces in the East African country. What a mess. Five attackers were killed. That's good. So... They're based in Somalia, Al-Shabaab is. They claimed responsibility. So, um, well, you know what, let me get to Tony out of California. I just want to get to some of these guys. Tony, thanks for holding. Hey, how you doing, sir? Doing fine, thanks for calling. Uh, all right, yeah, I was calling, the, I see you were talking about the uh, situation in... Uh, Speak up for me, uh, Tony, come close to your phone. Yeah, can you hear me now? That's better. Thank you. Yeah, I was calling about the uh, biblical question that I had for Jesse. I want to see what your take is on it. I'm dealing with the book of Isaiah, and I think the verse is 42 to 7. Okay. And uh, it speaks about that God created everything, even he created evil. So what you got to think, what's your thoughts on that? God created everything, including evil? Correct. Interesting. The, the, book of, the, the Bible says. Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light. He says, yeah. this is King James Version. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Amazing. <laughs> it is amazing, right? <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, I mean, you, I hear y'all speak about evilness. But right. Everything came from, everything came from God. Uh-huh. Everything. Everything comes from God. And does that mean that we sh- But God also says to overcome evil with good, right? Yes, he did. But the thing you also, the thing is, we don't pick and choose what, what's evil and what's, what's good. And that's the thing we do as yeah. human beings. Yeah, we're not we supposed to. Good. Only, uh, you're only supposed to, like, that's why uh, I think that the Bible says that God reveals that or something like that. Well, the thing is, I, I'm I'm trying to say is Christianity is is a label. It's a label that we put that people put upon themselves, and it's like a it's like going to a buffet. You pick and choose what's right, and you pick and choose what's wrong. Well, I, I know the whole lot of people live that way, and they're not supposed to, man. Well, that's that's the reason why I don't label myself as uh, Jesus. Is is, is 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 never seen in the Bible that Jesus labeled himself as a Christian. Because he, he was Christ. He, he labeled himself Christ, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> he didn't have to be a Christian, man. he was Christ himself. Once again, Christianity came <laughs> from man. It's a man-made concept. Whatever, man. But I think that you're no, taking I mean, the joke too speak, far. Accept the, you, accept the truth, my friend. Accept the I know, truth. but you're like, you're making, you're man-making this concept of Christianity is man-made. No, I, I, That's I'm a man-made concept. I'm the truth this truth, this I don't like labels stuff is a liberal man made thing. You better be careful, no, Tony. No, no, no. Yes, no, yes, not, not, yes, it's yes. Not a liberal thing. Yeah, it's it is. Not a liberal thing. Yeah, it it's is. A, man, not liking labels. That's a total liberal thing. Am I right, chat? No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. I didn't ask you. I asked <laughs> the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Tony, you, how come you listen to Jesse Lee Peterson's show and mine? Because I try to pick, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring the truth to the show. No, I'm you're trying to pick and choose propaganda. what's right and no, what's wrong. No, y'all bring a lot of propaganda to the show. Thank you. See, to the show propagating the truth, the propagating truth. No, 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 it's not. But once again, what is Trump going to do about this, this, this uh, Americans dying in Africa? What, what are you going to do? See, this is another big guy going on here in Africa. 
And y'all not saying nothing about Do you say here in Africa? Well, I'm talking about the, 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 the four Americans that killed them. Right. In I think Africa. three. Yeah. Or three then. Three. Yeah, not good. Well, well it, was, it was some Africans that killed too, but y'all don't care about them. No, no, I named some Africans who got killed. It was uh, four, I think five of them got killed, and I said, that's good. Right, right. I didn't exactly. say I don't care, I said, that's good. Other... Five attackers were okay. killed, I said, that's good. Okay, okay, but the thing yeah. is, what are y'all going to do? Why are y'all not speaking on that like y'all spoke on Ben Johnson? We just did speak on it, we just, I just barely heard about it. You know, the, the, the mainstream media kind of sets the tone for what's on people's minds. And I admit, I'm influenced. I read Drudge. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, okay, Tony, okay. nice talking with you. I'll be talking to you again soon. Have a good day. All right, you as well. Uh, <laughs> let me get to David out of Kentucky. David, how are you doing? Oh, pretty good, James. Uh, how's your new year going? Going fine. Nice to hear from you, David. All right, buddy. Uh, and you know you what? Know, Thank call... you for the support, man. Appreciate that. Hey, I wish you'd just call me David instead of D. Martin the Third. Oh, you know what? Because I only reason I say that is because that's the um, that's the oh, YouTube username. You can change that username I don't know if how you to like. Get rid of that. I don't know okay. how to get rid of that. All right. I hate that. I I'll hate remember. That. I'll remember that. I'll try and remember it. that and just say David. Yeah, I appreciate I'll that. I'll pass man. that on to Joel I mean, as well. If there's any way I can get rid of that, I will. Yeah, if I can figure it out, I'll send some... Um, yeah. I think I have your email address. If I d- That is my email. Okay. Nice. But appreciate I like that. It. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I'll, I'll send instructions if I can figure it out. <laughs> I, I yeah, anyway. appreciate that, man. I, I would. Yeah. No, nobody wants to help you. I know. Really? And uh, Friday, I'm about ready to commit suicide after that idiot. What are you, you talking about? Except all I, whoa. You talking about the fallen uh, state? Yeah. <laughs> With nuance, yeah. bro? He said everything except all I oop <laughs> And where is Persia? Where is Persia? It's Iran. Isn't that not, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, How nuance, did bro. You, have to dig to, to get, you know, I wish you, Jesse would have the... The, Me- the Masonic Mason back. Okay. You like that? That was the greatest show I've ever seen in the last two years. Appreciate that. Thank you for the feedback. Somebody, Jesse's agent, said, all these little children. Right. <laughs> you know, I understand you got, you're out there to help the young and the old and the in-between. Yeah. But God. You know, I need some San Francisco. You, I knew it was going to come out of my mouth every Every two seconds, Jesse asks a question. And you know, he's not even as far gone as the, as many of the people that he interviews. This nuance bro guy, he, he's oh, not yeah. even considered, he's pretty far left, but he's not even considered that far left. And how come you didn't play the chicken song when that, 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 <laughs> that priest walked out? Uh, because the chicken song is reserved for the Jesse Lee Peterson show, the radio show, not for the fallen well, state. I, I, <laughs> I would have made an exception for him. I know. And yes, and, and Friday, even though he stayed, I would have paid, played the chicken song for him, too. <laughs> yeah. Man, he was miserable. Did you see I mean, the... Really. Did you see the... There's um, nothing that he says that I believe in. Did you see nothing. the arm wrestling match? Yeah, I thought that was funny as hell. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping Jesse would win. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was talking to a girl. I'm hoping she listen to your show, man. I was talking to a girl last night on the Internet, and she wants to commit suicide so bad. And I kept telling her, listen to Jesse Lee Peterson. She'll, she'll, he'll change you. Yeah. And uh, she just couldn't understand. And I felt so sorry for the girl. Well, you know? I mean, that's... But I don't talk to her. I, I only know her on the Internet. Okay. Yeah. Well, people are blind, yeah. and they, they have to suffer. Some well, people just can't do it. Apparently, she's a little short and a whole lot overweight, uh-huh. and she has the heart problems. And the only friend she's got are a bunch of junkies. And she said she jumped out in front of a train one day but on, on the train tracks, but the train didn't come. <laughs> oh, man. And she, yeah, that's no time, reason to commit suicide. I know, I, know a couple, I know a couple girls that have hung themselves. Because they got fat and ugly. This is in Kentucky. This is in Kentucky or in the South somewhere. 
Well, she's over in Virginia, and, and the others are down in Florida. Man. Not yeah. good, man. No, it's not. No, it's not. My brother took his life in 76, and uh, I don't like that way of going. Yeah. No, I'm not for that either at all. Anyway, I just thought I'd give you a nice shout out. Appreciate the ch- you checking in. Thanks for the reviews of those Fallen State episodes. Yeah. Nuance Bros. Yeah, and Mess. If you ever had the Mason back, man, I would jump up and down. All right. Are you a Mason or no? My father and grandfather. Okay. I'm, I told Jesse, I think, you got to be real smart to become a Mason. Okay. You know, you got to read. There's so much you have to memorize. Oh. Uh, it ain't. It ain't funny. And I've got three people that'll stand up for me right now, but I just don't want to do it. Oh, uh, okay. To I join. Have trouble with the other stuff without getting into this. Right. Yep. Anyway, I love your show, man. Thank I you, David. You Appreciate you, man. Okay, All right. Yeah. You too. Okay. So. I have some texts from Bible Goji guy. That's right. I'm in it with the I'm on the I'm on the inside with the Bible Goji guy. Most contractors over there are former US military hired as security because our troops can't be everywhere. We send our fighting men into harm's way to protect US civilians overseas. So who is more valuable, soldiers or the US citizens that they are sent to protect? Dumb premise, dumb question. Oh, I go to guy. Shots fired. Iran is the origin of all terrorism, he says, since they grabbed our 52 embassy personnel. They actively promote finance and directly cause terror nationwide. Our fault lies in trying to nation build. So he's not, Babu Gutu guy says our problem is nation building. We shouldn't be doing that. That is where the largest amount of treasure was wasted, not in the actual war, which lasted only a short period. Interesting. That's according to him. Appreciate that. Let me briefly tell you guys, and then I'll get to you. Got the rest of you callers. Hang, hang tight, guys. So, show this Planned Parenthood running a PR campaign. Um, plan, this is from Washington Post. Shout out to Bubs Love. Thank you. From December 11th, this past month, Planned Parenthood to open reproductive health centers. So, Washington Post is running PR for Planned Parenthood, right? That's what the most of the liberal media does. At 50 Los Angeles high schools, clinics will offer birth control, STI testing, better known as STD testing. I guess STI sounds less bad. Sexually transmitted infections as, to, as opposed to sexually transmitted diseases. And pregnancy, te- tests, uh, pregnancy counseling, but not abortion. And I have other information. It's a pioneering new model of reproductive health services for Los Angeles County teens. And they are funded by $10 million from the Los Angeles County. So all those taxes that are going to the county, the $10 million of that is going to help Planned Parenthood open up their degenerate teaching propaganda mess, handing out condoms and all that gross stuff to teenagers in high schools. $6 $6 million from Planned Parenthood, which is federally funded, which also was a big part of the Women's March, which was an anti-Trump march the day after um, he was inaugurated. Teens listen to other teens, said Jennifer Rivera, age 23, a Planned Parenthood staffer who will oversee the training. I remember when I was in um, a freshman in high school, 14 years old, 1995, 96, something like that, we had, um, we had to g- get... Like, we had to stay inside at one point during PE class, physical education class. Normally, you're supposed to be outside playing and exercising, learning different sports, maybe wrestling, whatever, but generally outside. And instead, they had this stupid sex ed mess. And then beyond that, we also had health and safety for one semester, and then the second semester was relationships, which was more... Um, so-called sex ed mess, but I skipped the relationships. I took graphic arts. I learned how to silk screen. (laughs) I didn't silk screen enough. I was lazy and trifling, but, um, that, that sex ed stuff during the PE hours was from a Planned Parenthood woman. 
pretty lady, but evil. And they're, they're teaching mess. They're not teaching, you know, this Trump administration, from what I understand, is pushing more towards um, abstinence, not having sex. <laughs> I'm chuckling because I, I think that's what Trump did, right? <laughs> I don't know. It's a joke. But anyways, like, students will be able to walk into these clinics, make appointments, allowed to leave class for them. And they're being, it's, California has taken a leading role in pushing back against efforts by the Trump administration and conservative legislators to cut government funds for Planned Parenthood. Which is, you know, a baby abortion mill, right? Killing babies is what they're for, is their forte. But they also promote, you know, they, they're reputed to, um, Te- screen for breast cancer, even though abortion is linked to breast cancer, right? In October, it became the first state, California, to require its public colleges and universities to offer abortion medication under a law signed by Governor Gavin Newsom. Isn't that disgusting? Thank you, Gavin, with the beta baby. Five of the Planned Parenthood centers opened a few weeks into the school year. The rest will be added before June, before the end of the school year. Um, what else? Barbara Ferrer, who's director of the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health and a former high school pr- principal and a female, no doubt liberal. Well, I'm assuming that she's female. Maybe she's trans, but I'm assuming she's female. And she's talking about the program grew out of conversations about strategies for combating the area's alarming rise in sexually transmitted diseases. Ah, so they did use the word diseases, STDs such as gonorrhea and chlamydia. I don't know what that is. It's weird. Among young people ages 15 to 24. She said the clinics will be called well-being centers. They will do more than provide simple medical services. We want to support the general well-being, the ups and downs of being a teen. Women taking over, that proves Jesse Lee Peterson's point. Parent and community meetings before lunch, positive, supportive, so far. Because the Democrat... Voters are so dumb. Um, they, at the very end of the qu- article, they quote somebody who's not for it. Students for Life, Sister Paula Van Dagier, head of Volunteers for Life. She says, they already have school nurses. There's no need for Planned Parenthood to co-opt the nor- normal health program for health in the school. Because Planned Parenthood pushes sexuality beyond where they should, without reference to families. And that is so true. Planned Parenthood is so degenerate. Beyond just the abortions, they're disgusting. It's like having the Nazi party running PR and doing like a health thing for your, uh, for your um, school. Or it's actually worse than that because the Nazis only killed six or 10 million people, right? Supposedly. They only killed 10 million people. Planned Parenthood, <laughs> in part, and along with the whole rest of America, has killed over 60 million babies. Innocent people. And um, it's like having, it's like the bland, Black Panthers were running, like, programs to so-called help the community. But in reality, they're, they're come from a heart of evil. Just like, um, who's that guy? Farrakhan. Earl's daddy. <laughs> Just doing mess. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Shout out to Bob's love. Um, let me get to Lauren out of Idaho. Lauren, good to hear from you. Hey, James. Hey, what's up? Um, I was uh, calling in regards to something Earl was asking you. Yeah. Um, about Jesse's, he was questioning you about where in the Bible does it say to forgive your parents or your mother. Yeah. And you know he must not know his must not know his Bible because there are literally hundreds of passages that speak about forgiveness. Yeah, and I mean the main the main reason why we should forgive is because Christ Jesus has forgiven us. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if, right out of I mean. In Matthew six fourteen, it says, "If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others other sins, your Father will also not forgive your sins." Why do you think that the Bible doesn't highlight mothers specifically? 
Um, well, because I think what these passages say already is, you know, if, if there is a person amongst you that you have a grievance with, it's um, it's your duty to forgive them. Yeah. And the person, you know, since you you grow up living with your parents 247, yep. the people that are closest to you would make sense would be your parents. Yeah. So they, those would be the ones that would most likely have a grievance against you or you have a grievance against them. The first I mean, violators, the, for the sure. The law is, you know, love your your neighbor as yourself and, and believe in me. That covers pretty much everyone. And but more specifically, in these forgiveness passages, it says, you know, for a person, I mean, another, in Luke 17, it says, if your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them, and if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in one day, and seven times they come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Yeah. So, I mean, these passages literally cover, cover like familiar, people that have familiar love with you, being your close friends, your family, yeah. uh, your brothers and sisters. These passages specifically say that without having to come out and say, forgive your mother. You know it, what I mean? It does say, it is in the Ten Commandments to honor your father and mother. Exactly. And these exactly. people have a false imitation of honoring their mothers and fathers. By having like this false, oh, I love my mother. She was a nice lady. She was practically perfect. Lying about her, and that's not honoring. Well, I mean, so I, that's I think a lot of times it's, not genuine. A lot of times it might be um, unconscious lying. Like right, they they might know this, but they may not want to accept it or, or or say it on on the radio. Because yeah, you know, there's say, a lot of people who are like me, I, unconscious. I can come out and say honestly that my mother was a whore. She Whoa. got married six times. Dang. She, you know, I, I've already spoke to Jesse about this. I, I love her and I forgive her for it. But, you know, it took a long time for me to even admit that to myself. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. You know, so I, th- I think some people just can't really admit it. Yeah. But, so I have a further question for you, James. Okay. Do you think people like Earl and T, Marcus, uh, <laughs> I forgot another person, Joe, Joe. Yeah. that Jesse was talking with, do you think that, because some of these things we keep saying to them and you keep saying the same thing, but they keep getting caught up on one little word or one little part, or it just doesn't get through to them. So my question is, do you think these people literally don't have a high enough IQ or enough intelligence to to have the critical thought that would require them to have self-reflection? I don't do think really, it's, do I don't think it's, think it's a matter of... These people, honestly, go ahead. I don't think it's a matter of intelligence. It's a matter of openness. Like what Jesse uh, talked yeah, about with know, openness. You're probably right. Yeah. Because yeah, because the dummies. Yeah, you're probably you're right. You, you know often you're have right an about that time. because the thank God that that the scripture you know the gospel isn't aimed at the intellectuals. Yeah. It's aimed at the heart. Yep. Because because we would have that problem. Because yeah, I mean even the the least intelligent of persons you would think would know when something is immoral. Right. Right? You don't have to have intelligence to know that something's wrong. You're right about that, James. And in some cases, especially if they haven't been, like, trained and, and, you know, had their ego pumped up with a bunch of knowledge about this type of thing, they're, like, sometimes have better clear... often, usually maybe, have better clarity than the rest of us that did learn all this other stuff. Sure, uh, yeah, because they don't have that head full of of garbage that's swirling around making them... (laughs) Not able to see the the forest from the trees. Yeah, I appreciate it, Lauren. Great call. Yeah, I just you know I have so much to talk about, but I just wanted to 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 comment on that because when I first started listening to Jesse, I had those same kind of questions too. But yeah, I mean, there's hundreds of passages about forgiveness, and you know, for me personally, that's one of the attractions to me about being born again, about being a Christian, is someone forgiving me for how crappy of a person I was my whole life. <laughs> that was like one of the main draws of Christianity. I'm like, nice. well, it, you know, so um, it, it's in there. Just, I, you know, for, I guess just, just Earl, just look deeper and you'll find it. Right on, man. Appreciate you, Lauren. We'll talk All again. Right, James, talk to you again. All right. All right, peace. Let me get to Lynn out of Chicago. Lynn, how are you? Hey, how you doing there, Hank? Doing fine. Yeah, I had a big, I had a, a, a basic question. When do you think that the Democrats are going to impeach President Trump for uh, <laughs> the death of the one guy, Sula Mayor, whatever his 
Jesus. I don't know, but I read a brief headline from Drudge that Pelosi wants to try to limit Trump on what his actions will be forthcoming regarding Iran. <laughs> but Trump tweeted out the other day that if Iran does anything, that America is going to come down hard on them. And he's, he said that this tweet serves as notice. This social media post serves as notice to Congress, even though it's not required, it's, it's here anyways. <laughs> and um, he said that it could be even a disproportionate reaction against, um, against Iran should they try to do anything back at us. And um, I love that. I don't know if they're going to try to impeach over this. And people are saying that this complicates the, you know, impeachment uh, mess. I think that Nancy Pelosi, I think Trump tweeted about it this morning, she still hasn't sent the articles over to the Senate. So it's still in the hands of the House. And he's, I think he said that she's a coward or scared or something like that. My yeah. second question is, do you think Turtle took a moment of silence to honor the General uh, Sulemi? No, nah, I don't think that Earl cares about him. Okay. <laughs> but my... Uh... My next question is, do you think any, any of the Democrats are uh, thinking about naming a street in their, in their local uh, communes in <laughs> honor of that general? Who? Who might any, name a street? Yeah, any, any, of these, any of these Democrats, for example, <laughs> like the mayor of Chicago, do, yeah. you think she would, do you think she's actually plotting to name uh, oh, man. Jackson, Bull Jackson Avenue after him in Chicago? Lori Lightfoot? Andrew Jackson. You know, I don't know, but I remember there was this New York Times foreign-sounding name, uh, woman, uh, reporter, whatever. She shared on Twitter a video clip of this man reciting, like, poetry <laughs> after he died. And I don't know what the purpose was, maybe to get us, let us know that he was human or something like that. But, yeah, crazy. You know what? One of the one of the crazy things is, you know, I was a in two thousand three. I was in the army, and I was in, I was a part of the invasion of Iraq. Okay. And later on, later on, we started finding all these weird IDs, IEDs. Yeah. And uh, you know, after a while, we we, we started noticing our Iranians around because the Iraqis would point us point them out to us. You could actually tell the difference between an Iranian and an Iraqi. Okay. Very 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 simple differences. Yeah. And the one thing I, I, I can rec I can say about this, that stretch of of, uh, of of highway that he was on, that that goes around Baghdad International Airport. Yeah, a lot of U.S. troops were killed along that stretch. Wow! And God bless America for taking that guy out along that stretch of highway, where a lot of them were killed. And um, the thing is, me personally. I, I was wounded by one of those IEDs. Wow. I have, a, I have, a, I have like a five-inch scar on my arm. I wear hearing aids, and I have a uh, brain aneurysm, several of them in my head from, from that IED that I was exposed to over there. Man, that is yeah. brutal. That is a crazy story, Lynn. I appreciate you yeah. sharing that, man. Yeah, probably, it, yeah that, that whole thing probably took off 20 years of my life, I would, I would suspect. Dang. Well, I hope you yeah. continue to heal up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, for the most part, I can, I can, uh, I can thank that for getting my, I can thank that for getting my government job. So yeah, you know, yeah. I guess that's only about it. Well, Lynn, I wish you well, man. Appreciate you. No problem. You, uh, you have a nice day, there, Hank. All right, you as well, man. Take care. Take care. So, guys, anchor babies are rampant. Nearly four hundred thousand anchor babies born in twenty nineteen. Exceeding U.S. births in 48 states. That's according to Breitbart. Uh, it was shared. People are talking about Trump not issuing an executive order. And for tomorrow, I'll maybe pass this along to Jesse or share it myself, about this U.S. teen who was killed in that cartel attack at uh, the Mexican border region highway. Uh, just, I think it took place on Saturday or so. Yeah, Saturday night. Anyways, guys. We'll talk to you later. Check out um, rebuildingtheman.com slash church for church yesterday. It was excellent. And make sure you subscribe to Bond to Build the Man YouTube channel. All right, guys. Take care. What's that? And the Hake report.com.